the first seam finish that we're going to practice is the zigzag stitch. So looking at what I have here, I've inserted a straight stitch on the 5 8 inch line. For our zigzag stitch, first let's open this out. And here we have our two seam allowances. So starting with one seam allowance, we'll, we'll do one at a time. You're going to open it out like that and place it on under, on your needle plate and you're going to line up the left side of your presser foot with the seam line right here on your fabric. So go ahead and first make sure you have your stitch selector set to a zigzag stitch. So lower your presser foot and your or your needle and your presser foot. We're going to back stitch first. Then we're going to stitch forward all the way to the to the end. Making sure that you keep the left edge of the presser foot on that seam right there at the center. Back stitch. Then you will do the same thing on the other side. Making sure that you're keeping this seam out of the way. Back stitch. And there you see you have your zigzag stitch on both sides. And what you're going to do next is you're going to trim away the excess seam allowance as close to the zigzag stitch as you can get without cutting through the stitches. So we're going to trim as close as we can get, being careful not to cut through the stitches. So just make sure you take your time on this part. And then you will do that on both sides. And then this is what you have. When you lie it flat, this side here is what both will look like. So you will go to your ironing station after you're done finishing your seam and you will press flat on both sides. Then you will open the seam out and press it open on both sides. Okay, pressing it open. So that's your zigzag stitch, really easy to do. Now, keep in mind that for knit fabric, you don't have to finish your seams because it doesn't fray. However, if you like for your garment to look pretty on the inside, like I do, you can go ahead and finish your seams anyway. Now, let's, let me show you the second method and that will require the purchase of a new tool called the pinking shears and the pinking shears are scissors with a jagged edge. On both blades you get a jagged edge and what they do is they just give you a nice jagged edge on your finish. So what you would do is after you have sewn in your seam, your straight stitch, you're going to sew in another straight stitch change your stitch selector back to a straight stitch, leaving everything else as is, and right at the edge of your seam that you have made on the 5 8 inch mark, you're going to line up the left side of your presser foot right along that line. Lower your, oh, one at a time, one side at a time. I almost sewed them together. So open out your, your seam allowance and we're going to work on one side at a time. So you're lining up the presser foot with this edge, the previous seam. And you are going to back stitch and then stitch forward to the end. Back 
stitch. Do the same thing on the other side. Line it up with the left edge of the presser foot. Back stitch. Back stitch. Then, this is what you have. Two rows of straight stitching. What you're going to do next is take one seam allowance at a time and using your pinking shears, you're going to cut as close to the second seam as you can get without cutting through the stitches. Be very careful, take your time on this so that you don't cut through your stitches. And then you will do the same thing to the other side. You will go to your pressing or to your ironing board, press flat on both sides. Then you will open it out and press your seams open. And this nice finished edge here is what you will have on both sides. So press it open on both sides, pressing, pressing it flat. And then that's your second seam finish. Now I'm going to show you a third seam finish, but I need to set up my serger because that is a different machine that we'll use. So I'll go get set up and I'll be right back. For the next seam finish, I am using my serger, and this is the Brother 1634D. Now, this is not my first serger. I also have a Singer that I purchased many years ago. When I took my very first sewing class in a studio in Los Angeles, the instructor allowed us to use her serger to finish our seam allowances, and I fell in love, and I knew that if I was going to sew, I needed that machine. So I did get one, and when you see what it does, you're going to love it. If you're new and you've never seen this before, you're going to absolutely love it. It is the quickest method I know to finish seams, and it gives it a really beautiful finish. And what it does is it finishes the seam and cuts off the excess fabric at the same time. So what you do, you can do it either individually, one seam, at a time, one seam allowance at a time, or you can finish it with both seams closed, depending on the type of fabric that you're using and um, the amount of bulk you will have um, to show through on the other side. If you're using a really thick fabric, you will want to do one seam at a time. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put both through. So I line it up on the edge here. And then I'm just going to stitch and you will see that it's going to finish and cut off the end of the fabric at the same time. Now take a look. Check this out. Is that beautiful? I love it. I love my serger. It's, it's beautiful. So if you are in the market for a new machine, the Brother 1634 is great for a beginner. That completes our seam finishes. There are many others to learn, and as you get more into sewing, you will run across the different methods. But those are the three easiest that I wanted to show you. So you can choose whichever seam finish you want to do, you want to use as we're sewing this garment and any other garments as you continue sewing. So we're ready to start constructing our skirt. So grab your skirt pieces, get your machine set up, and let's start sewing. Okay, I am looking at the back piece and it is folded in half with the wrong side facing out as we cut it out. And the reason I know it's the back piece is because it has the double notches. Here. 
change your stitch selector to a zigzag stitch and change your stitch width to a one. Leave your stitch length the same. Go ahead and insert your shoulder at the 5 8 inch line. Lower your needle and presser foot. We're going to back stitch and then stitch forward all the way to the end. Keeping your fabric lined up with the 5 8 inch mark on your needle plate. And make sure you're stitching at a speed that is comfortable for you. Back stitch. Lift your needle. Don't snip your thread. Just go ahead over to the next seam. You can snip your thread if you'd like, but you can just go over to the next shoulder and do the same thing. Back stitch and stitch forward. Back stitch. Then we're going to snip our threads. If your machine has a built-in cutter, then you don't have to do this. You'll just cut it off with your built-in cutter. One of these days I'll probably get one of those really fancy machines that has all the built-in uh, gadgets. But for now, I just use my, my manual machine and it does just fine. Now, you go ahead and finish the seams on your shoulders using whichever method you choose um, from the three that I, I demonstrated today. Or if you have a different method that you already know how to use, go ahead and just finish your edges. And then we're gonna go to press those after we stitch our neck band. To sew our neck band together, we're going to take the ends, put them together with the right sides facing each other. So let's line up the edges. If you need to, you can go ahead and place a pin or two. And then we're going to sew at the 5 8 inch line and we're going to sew either a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch you choose if you're doing a zigzag stitch make sure your width is at a 1 your stitch width back stitch and stitch all the way to the end and back stitch again Okay, and there you have your neck band that has been sewn together, and this is what it should look like. You can go ahead and, actually you don't have to finish the edges on this one because it's going to be folded wrong size together. So when you go to the ironing board, we're going to press this flat, and then we're going to fold the neck band together with the wrong sides facing, and we're going to press it all the way around. So let's go to the ironing board. Okay, I have finished the edges of my shoulder seams using my serger, so we're going to press. So take your iron, and you're going to use your press cloth, don't forget that. Press flat, a couple of seconds. Turn it over on the other side and do the same thing. Press flat on both sides. Then we're going to open it out with the wrong side facing up. We're going to press the seam allowances to the back side of your garment. The back is the one that has the double notches. So cover that with your press cloth. Make sure you don't have any folds and press down a couple of seconds. Flatten the other side, making sure you don't have any folds. 
Then we're going to turn it over to the other side and do the same thing. Making sure it's flat. Press. Making sure this side is flat. Press. And the difference between pressing and ironing, when you're pressing, you're just holding the iron down in place for a few seconds. When you're ironing, you're moving the iron. We're pressing. Okay, now we have the shoulder seams pressed. Let's put those aside. Grab your neckband. Okay, we have our neckband right here in front of us with the wrong side spacing out. Here is the stitched end. So we're just going to press that flat on both sides. Then we're going to open out that seam and press it flat. your press cloth and press that flat on both sides so turn it with the right side out and press it flat now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and fold it with the right sides together. Fold it with the right sides together. And we're going to work with one section at a time. So actually I'm going to start with the seam and we're going to press just one section at a time. So we're going to start with this section. Cover it with your press cloth. and press. Then if you'd like, you can take a pin. After you press that section, you can take a pin and insert it just so it holds its place and you will know where you started, although we started at the seam, so that would be easy. Okay, continue folding in half, making sure that the raw edges are meeting, and press. Insert a pin if you'd like to keep it folded. Then we'll move over to the next section. Make sure the edges are meeting and press. Pin. And one more section. Press. And pin. So there is your neck band all pressed and ready to be inserted into your neckline of your shirt. So let's go back to the sewing machine. Here we are with our shirt with the shoulder seams already sewn and pressed. And we're looking at the front side of our shirt where the scoop goes lower. Now, before we attach the neckband to the shirt at the neck edge, we need to make a few marks. Now, if you look at the back of the neckband, that's where the seam is. This is the center back, and you have the two notches right next on either side of that seam. So we need to find the center front. So what we're going to do is fold this in half. Now, this is not in the instructions. I'm, I'm giving you this little tip because it makes it easier when we're pinning this neckband to the top of the shirt. So fold it in half and right at this corner go ahead and put a little snip. Just a single notch. That's going to let us know that's the center front of this neckband. Now remember, when we cut this out, we transferred those dots, those little X's, 
to the wrong side. Let's remove these pins because we need to go find those right now. Okay, so we're going to open it out. And wherever those dots are, we need to transfer the, or, or we need to make a little snip there because those are where we're going to attach this band to the side seams, the shoulder seams of the top. So find your little X's wherever they meet. And again, make a tiny little snip on both sides. So find it on this side. Here are mine. So I'm going to make a little snip right there. And that will let me know that's where I'm going to place this on my shoulder seams. Okay, now we're ready to attach. So you're going to take your neck band and place it over your top with the center back seam at the back. Oh, stop. First, we have to find the center front of the shirt. So what you're gonna do is take these two notches, fold it in half, line up your seams for the shoulder, line them up even, so there's your center back. We, are, we don't have to worry about that because we have the notches. We need to find the center front. So lining up those seams, fold this in half, and then go and put a little snip right there. And that will let us know that's the center front of the shirt. And that will help us to place the neck band in the proper place. Okay, again, take your neck band with your shirt front facing you, your neck band and place it over your shirt, okay, with the back seam at the back of the shirt. So you're going to line up the notches of your shirt with the notches of your neck band and pin. On the other side, line up with the notches with the notch and pin. Then you're gonna go around, keeping that neck band straight so that it doesn't twist. And this is the side seam. And to check to make sure, you open it out and make sure those dots are there, the little X's that we made. And if that's there, then you know that this is the side seam for the neck band. So you're going to attach it to the side or not the side seam, but the side mark of the neck band, and you're going to attach it to the side seam of your um, shirt, the shoulder seam, and pin. And when you're pinning, make sure you're pinning through your seam allowance, okay? If you pressed your seam allowances open, then go ahead and press or place two pins to keep it open while you're sewing so that it doesn't flip over. Okay, go over to the other side, seam, shoulder seam, Find that notch, place it at the shoulder seam, and pin through your seam allowance. Now let's go find the front seam, or the front center front, on your neck band and on your shirt. So there's a center front, and we're going to pin. Now we're ready to sew. You will notice that we did not place pins all the way around. That's because the neck band is shorter than the shirt and it's supposed to be that way because we're going to stretch the neck band to fit the shirt as we're sewing. So all the way around, you're going to have that gap. So let's start at the back seam of your neck band and we're going to place it on your needle plate. I wanna show you guys something. Some machines come with a free arm. And what that means is you have a section that you can remove. So when you're sewing circular or round areas that you can just fit them right under around that arm for sewing. And that comes in handy, especially when you're so, or attaching sleeves, which is what we will be doing today. So if you have a free arm, go ahead and remove it and start sewing that way. For those of you who don't have a free arm, I'm gonna put mine back on so that you can see that you don't need the free arm to sew your band on. So just place your shirt on your needle plate, making sure that the other 
part of your neckband is below that it's not going to get caught up in here while you're sewing. So go ahead and place it at the 5 8 inch line. I'm sorry, actually the instruction calls for a 3 8 inch seam for sewing this band on and we wrote that on your pattern instruction sheet. So go ahead and line it up with the 3 8 inch line on your machine. Okay, and remember we're sewing a horizontal stitch, so we're going to use a zigzag stitch. So make sure your stitch selector is at zigzag, at a zigzag, and we're going to stitch at a one, or the width, we're going to set it at a one. All right, so at the 3 8 inch line, lower your needle and your presser foot. And what you're going to do as you're sewing is you're going to stretch the neck band until the shirt is flat. We're not going to go any further than we need to. We just need to go until our shirt is flat because we don't want to stretch our the neckline of our shirt, just the neckband. So let's back stitch and then we're going to stretch the neckband until the shirt is flat, making sure that your edges are lined up evenly and then stitch, keeping your eye on that 3 8 inch line on your needle plate. Make sure you remove your pins as you go along. And stitch at a speed that's comfortable for you again. Stretch. As you manipulate your fabric, as you go around the curve, make sure that there's nothing under here to get caught in, in with the other fabric that you're, you're sewing. I'm going to speed mine up a little bit. Now, make sure that when you go over this shoulder seam allowance, that that seam allowance is flat. We pinned it down, but you still want to double check that to make sure that the seam allowance or both seam allowances, if you pressed yours open, are flat. So go ahead and stretch your fabric or stretch until the neck band is straight and stitch on the 3 8 inch line, making sure you remove those pins and continue. Checking and adjusting your fabric as, as often as you have to to make sure that everything is lined up. And again, when you come to that seam, make sure it's the shoulder seam, make sure it's flat. And we're coming around to where we started. Make sure that everything lines up. And then we're going to back stitch. And we have attached our neckband. The next thing you will want to do is trim around the edge of your neckband. You're going to trim just a small amount. You don't need to trim too much because what we're going to do is when we turn this to the inside, we're going to do a top stitch, which means we're going to stitch on top of your shirt close to the seam line to keep that the seam allowance on the inside down. So we're going to trim away maybe about less than half. Thank you. 
So you will go ahead and continue and trim that off all the way around and then we'll go ahead and do a top stitch. Okay, we have attached our neckband to the neck edge of our shirt and you should have pressed before we do a top stitch, you will need to press this flat. So you will take it to your ironing board and you will press it out flat. This We're looking at the wrong side. You're going to press the neck band away from your shirt and the seam allowance will go toward your shirt. So you're going to press that flat all the way around. When you finish that, then you're gonna to come to the machine, turn your shirt with the right side facing out. And then we're going to start at the back neck edge where the seam is on the neck band. Go ahead and insert that under your needle plate. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew a top stitch using a zigzag stitch because this is a horizontal stitch placement close to this seam where we inserted the neck band. So all the way around, we're going to do a zigzag stitch. So set your machine, if it's not there already, for a zigzag stitch with a stitch width of one. And insert it under your needle plate, or under your needle. Now, as far as where to line up your needle for sewing, go ahead and lower your needle and see where it stops. Then you want to let it go all the way in and keep turning until it goes to the other side and see where it ends up. You want to make sure that you're sewing on top of the seam allowance under this shirt on the wrong side. So if your zigzag goes off of that, you need to move your garment to where your zigzag is going to stay right in that area. Okay, so I'm going to lower my needle. And that's a good place for me. I'm going to lower my presser foot. And your guideline this time, mine is on the 4 8 inch line on my needle plate. That's my placement. Yours may be different. So once you set it up to where your stitching is on top of that seam allowance, take a look to see where your placement is and follow that as your guideline. So let's sew starting with a back stitch. And then we're going to sew all the way around until we meet this stitching again, taking your time. We're not pulling, we're not pushing, we're just allowing the uh, feed dogs to feed the fabric through. As you come upon your curve, you're just going to manipulate the fabric with your hands around the curve. And as you come upon that shoulder seam, if it's bulky when your needle a presser foot tries to go over it, just lift it, allow it to go under, and then replace your presser foot. And make sure when you're going over that shoulder seam that everything is flat so you're not sewing in any folds. Give it a little push when you're going over that hump. If it's not moving through, give it just a little push, but only long enough to get it over that hump.
we're coming up on the shoulder seam again where you have that extra bulk in there so go ahead and if you need to give it a little push and we're coming up to where we begin so when you meet that stitching you're going to go just a little bit past it and then do a back stitch our threads and there we have our top stitch okay so that completes that and we will when we give it a final press we will make sure we press this down flat to seal in the stitches now we're going to go and stitch the side seams of our garment. So turn it inside or yeah, wrong side out. And we're going to pin from the bottom to the top because remember we, we want to start at the bottom to make sure we have um, even edges at the bottom for when we sew in our hem. So go ahead and press or I'm sorry, pin your garment from the bottom up to the top. And use however many pins you need to again for control. Make sure you match your notches. And then starting at the bottom, sewing on your 5 8 inch line, zigzag or straight stitch. This is a vertical stitch, so you can use a straight stitch. I'm using a zigzag stitch. So back stitch, so all the way to the end, back stitch, and then you're done on this side. Is your first side seam you're going to do the same thing on the other side and once you complete that go ahead and finish your seams with whichever finishing method you you choose to use then go to the ironing board press your seams flat on both sides then press them open if you choose to finish your seams remember you're sewing with it so you don't have to finish your seams so go ahead and do all of that and then meet me back at the sewing machine and we're going to sew in our sleeves all right we have sewn up our side seams and we have finished those seams and we have pressed those seams now we're ready to attach our sleeve let's put this shirt aside and grab one of your sleeve pieces and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert an ease stitch between these dots, the little X's that we made on our fabric. So set your machine for a straight stitch on the stitch selector, and then your stitch length will be the, large, the highest number on your machine. Mine is a four, and that's the basting stitch. So go ahead and set that up. And then you're going to insert your sleeve where the first X is at the 5 8 inch line. So insert that X right under your needle. Insert your needle and lower your presser foot. And we're going to sew around this curve to the next X and that's, or the last X and that's where we're gonna stop. Manipulating your fabric on the curve as you go. And just take your time on the curve. And then stop. And then you're going to pull it. You need a long tail because we're going to be pulling up that 
stitch as we insert it into our shirt. We're going to do the same thing on the same piece, but we're going to move into the seam allowance. So we're going to move out starting in the same place, but we're going to place the left edge of the presser foot right along the stitch that we just put in. So doing the same thing, go all the way to the end. And stop. Long tail. Okay, next you're going to take the ends, the underarm um, ends of your sleeve with the right sides facing and you're going to stitch this seam from the bottom edge up to the top. This is the underarm seam. So go ahead and place that at the 5 8 inch. Change your stitch selector to either a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. Change your stitch length back to a 2.5 and your stitch width to a 1. If you're doing a zigzag stitch, you'll change your stitch width to a 1. If you're doing a straight stitch, you can keep it in between the 2 and a 3. Okay. Back, back stitch and stitch all the way to the end. And back stitch. And you're gonna cut off your ends. Okay. Now you're going to go to the, uh, or you're going to finish your seam allowances again using whichever method that you choose then you're going to go to the ironing board and you're going to press the seams flat and then you're going to press them open then we're going to come back to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how to press up or insert a hem for this sleeve so go ahead and finish your seams and press <music>